Welcome back. A video call between the presidents of the United States and Russia has done little to defuse tensions over Ukraine, which Moscow insists it will not invade. But Joe Biden failed to secure a guarantee from Vladimir Putin to withdraw troops from Ukraine's doorsteps after threatening strong economic measures. Sarah Wong reports. Good to see you again. After exchanging pleasantries, U.S. President Joe Biden warned his Russian counterpart not to invade Ukraine. After their two-hour video call, the White House said the American leader threatened Vladimir Putin with economic retaliation. Seven years ago, the Obama administration, in which Biden served as vice president, sanctioned Russia after Putin incorporated the Crimean Peninsula in Ukraine into Russia following a disputed referendum. Moscow was unfazed then, and it's emboldened now, as Washington took a tougher line. Things we did not do in 2014, we are prepared to do now. That includes pushing Germany to stop the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline and restrict Russian banks and exports. Biden also pledged to bolster Ukraine's defense with additional material and fortify NATO's vulnerable eastern flank. Putin denied that an invasion of Ukraine is imminent and denounced the Western military presence on Ukrainian soil. He asked for legal assurances from the U.S. not to let Ukraine become a member of NATO. Putin has repeatedly warned against NATO's eastward expansion, a nightmare that kept the Russian strongman up at night throughout his decades-long political career. He has accused the West of reneging on the guarantee that NATO won't further eclipse Russia, which launched military action in 2008, when Georgia was on the brink of joining the Western Defense Alliance. Sarah Wong, HKIBC. Germany has entered a new political era with Olaf Scholz voted in as chancellor after 16 years under Angela Merkel. The Social Democrat heads a three-party coalition with his foreign policy underpinned by pragmatism. But the new foreign minister, green politician Annalena Baerbock, has struck a tougher tone on China. President Xi Jinping congratulated Scholz and expressed hopes of deeper ties with Berlin. Amal, the giant puppet that represents child migrants, has taken his message to Britain's parliament as lawmakers opened a debate on a controversial bill. The measures include penalizing people who arrive in the country without a visa, a move aimed at desperate migrants risking their lives to reach Britain. We must not forget about the refugees who are fleeing persecution and seeking a better life. And Amal is here to represent that and to remind the Commons that they should remember the lives of those who've died and the people who are travelling at the moment and seeking sanctuary. And we, we are here to support that. Amal arrived in England at the end of an 8,000 kilometre journey, which began in Syria in July. Along the way, it was greeted by hundreds of thousands of people, including Pope Francis in Rome. The puppet has helped to raise awareness about the plight of millions of children displaced because of war, poverty, violence and famine. The yuan has risen to a three-and-a-half-year high against the U.S. dollar. The Chinese currency closed at 6.3535 to the greenback on the domestic market, with the offshore yuan trading around the same level. This came after the central bank set its daily fixing at a six-month high. Traders said foreign exchange settlement demand and confidence in China's economic growth will continue to boost the yuan, which has gained 2.7 percent so far this year. Property plays were under the spotlight today in volatile trading on the Hong Kong stock market. China Evergrande plunged 5.5% to an all-time low after it missed a debt payment deadline and increased its risk of defaulting. Trading in shares of the Kaiser Group was suspended amid fears that the mainland developer may not meet an offshore debt deadline. 
Chinese social media giant Weibo made its Hong Kong debut today and closed 7.2% below its offer price. Now let's take a look at the markets. The Hang Seng ended the day up 13 points. To the top 10 active stocks, Alibaba was down $5.90, Tencent was up $3.20, Meituan down $0.60, cents. the tracker fund up $0.02, cents, while the AIA was up $1.10. Hong Kong exchanges was down $1.60, China Construction Bank down $0.06, cents. Ping An Insurance was up $0.70, cents, while Wuxi Biologics was up $4.80. To the forex trading against the Hong Kong dollar, the euro is at 8.79, the pound sterling at 10.28, Canadian dollar 6.17, and the Australian dollar at 5.56. And finally, in Europe, the London FTSE is currently up 18 points. And on to the weather now. It will be fine and dry during the day tomorrow. Temperatures will range between 18 and 23 degrees. Expect more of the same over the next few days. Now let's take a look at the weather around the world. That's our main news for Wednesday night. Join us for more news at 11. I'm Raymond Yuan. Good evening.